Hello everyone and welcome to a new Let's Play for a new game. It's today it is Zoo Tycoon, the complete collection which includes the Marine Mania and the Dinosaur Digs expansion packs. Uh, let's go into the tutorials and scenarios. And you see here there are a wide range of tutorials and scenarios to do. Um, I've already done the first tutorial which is called Game Controls which you have to do when you install the game. Uh, you can't just jump straight in. Um, it's really easy, it's just basically showing you how to play the game. Like, see here, select, game up, select this button, zoom in, zoom out, rotate the game world, pause and resume, uh, play something in the world and then undo, and then delete sections of fence. It's really easy, um, but you have to do it just so that you actually know how to play the game. Uh, there are a whole load more tutorials. But I'm not going to do the tutorials. Uh, if you are interested in doing the tutorials, I recommend you purchase the game for yourself uh, and do the tutorials and they basically tell you how to play the game. But what I am going to do is go into the first scenario which is called Small Zoo. It says difficulty beginner. Uh, later on there are intermediate, advanced and very advanced scenarios. But you can't do them because I need to do some of the earlier scenarios first. So. Small Zoo. Difficulty Beginner. This small zoo starts with three well-made exhibits and three animals ready for adoption. Match the correct animal with its preferred exhibit. Examine the names of the exhibits, get a clue as to which habitats will best suit the animals. To do this, click the exhibit gate and note the name of the exhibit. Once the animals are in the correct exhibits, six new animals will become available. Create suitable exhibits for the three of these new animals. Six months to complete. Earn an exhibit suitability rating of at least 60 for six exhibits. Achieve an animal average animal happiness rating of 80. So, nothing difficult about the scenario. It's basically a tutorial in and of itself. So let's play. And we are inside the zoo. Okay. So, first things first. Uh, we do have six months to complete. We start with $75,000. Uh, interestingly, with this game, you have to wait until the game ends before it actually lets you win. So even if you meet all the conditions, you have to wait for the six months to end uh, before you win. Um, now, we have, if we go here, we have an exhibit called Moose Land, uh, within which we are going to put a male moose and a female moose. We also have an exhibit here called Camel Desert within which we are going to put a male camel and a female camel. I'm not liking the way how it's kind of squared this terrain. I'm wondering if we can fix that somehow. Um. Ah, here we go. Change that and change. There we go. And sorry about all this. I should have done this and not recorded. Um, hmm. I think that'll do. Right. There we go. It's now uh, perfectly fine, and we are in one zero two four by seven six eight. Everything is good, and we also have moving back to the game. We also have an exhibit called Giraffe World. Wonder what we're going to put there? A male giraffe? Now that the giraffes, moose and camels are all in proper exhibits, you can purchase six more animals. Choose three of them and make suitable exhibits for them. Okay. And we also want a female giraffe. And we can actually improve the um, improve the exhibits, which we may as well. Um, so it's saying that they want more rocks in the exhibits. And how are we doing for trees? The favourite tree of this is the Umbrella Thorn and Cassia tree. Probably mispronounce that. So let's do that. I don't want any more trees. Doesn't want any less trees. No, it's perfectly fine with the number of trees that there are. Very well. Although we'll probably be happier if we No actually no, let's just keep it as it is. It doesn't like that. Hmm. Likes this though. Oops. 
Okay, that's the right number of trees. So, the uh, they're happy enough. In fact, how are these moose doing? They want more rocks. Okay, let's put some rocks in your exhibit then. Okie dokie. And the camels. They probably want some rocks, I imagine. Yeah, they want more rocks. Let's just put some rocks in there. Oops. One, oops. One too many. And the camels are happy. S right, next objective. You see, it's only been 17 days. And we do have six months, so we probably have to do a bit of waiting around, uh, within which I can tell you more about the game. So, all we have to do is just build three exhibits, um, and uh, make them suitable enough, and we're done. It's not a difficult scenario, it's basically a tutorial. But what we really need to do is build an exhibit here, and build a path, so they can actually get to the exhibit. The guests, that is. Uh, let's go for a plexiglass fence. Eh. 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 There we go. Now, I don't normally name my exhibits, and today is no exception, so it's just going to be called Exhibit 1. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so we have Thompson's Gazelle, African Lion, Leopard, Red Kangaroo, Bengal Tiger, Polar Bear, the Yeti, I think that's simply there because um, I've got the expansion packs installed. So, let's do... Uh, Bengal Tiger. Male and female. First things first, they will need a, a, um, a shelter. And the Bengal Tiger likes the wood shelter. And it also needs some rainforest terrain. Uh huh. It would help if I could get my sizes correct. There we go. Uh, fill that in with rainforest. Okay. It also needs some water. Apparently, the exhibit is not big enough. That's not good. Uh, okay. Uh, let's rotate the world around and make this exhibit a tiny bit bigger. Okay. So, let's make the exhibit bigger. Hmm, huh, that's annoying. Um, you can use the edge of the, um, of the game world to as like an exhibit wall which actually does save money uh, anyway let's merge these two together and rotate the world back round and the exhibit is now big enough but it needs more rainforest and more fresh water and less grass so let's give it a little bit more rainforest whoops and a bit of fresh water, um, which can act as like drinking and um, swimming, kind of. Still so much grass, not enough rainforest. There's too much grass, not enough dirt. So build some, build some dirt. That doesn't make any sense. Get some dirt. Uh, it's a very fine balancing act. The zookeeper doesn't always tell you exactly what they want. It's a bit annoying. But I think that's okay. And now we need trees and rocks. So the Bengal tiger likes the mangrove tree. And where's that? It is here. So, let's build some trees. I'm going to say build. I know it should be grow, or buy, or whatever. Build trees. Get trees, whatever. And a moose has given birth. That'm fast. 
I've only been pregnant for a month. Things happen fast in this game. You buy a male moose, you buy a female moose, they make love, they get pregnant, and uh, they give birth. All that in a month. That's pretty impressive. Anyway. And now they need some rocks. So, we can buy... Well, we could buy a massive waterfall rock if we have the space. Uh, but we don't. So let's get some... Uh, jungle rock formation. Now the thing about this is... The animal, the animal will like it, if it's a rainforest animal. But they like it so much, they'll literally have infinite of them. Um, which can be very expensive. But it just keeps increasing the animal's happiness, up to a point, I think. Because I can't imagine that you can just use that to spam happiness. Maybe you can, I don't know. Anyway, more rocks. Let's put rocks everywhere. Whoops, one too many. Uh... Okay, that is now a perfect Bengal Tiger exhibit with a suitability rating of 100 out of 100. Okay, I'm going to stop, uh, not the video, and just explain. So, the game's called Zoo Tycoon. You are the owner, runner, manager of a zoo. Um, you start with a certain amount of money in dollars and essentially you are given several objectives with which to complete and the time limit with which to complete them and you have to complete all the objectives and make sure that they're still completed by the end of the time limit rather than oh your objectives are completed you've won the scenario um, there are many different types of animals to buy um, or get so tigers, moose, camels giraffes are just some of them because you've also seen there's gazelle lions polar bears um, kangaroos there are plenty it's just what this scenario has given us and they all have different exhibit needs as you'd expect like even though um, a giraffe lives in Africa and a gazelle lives in Africa, and a zebra lives in Africa, they all have different exhibit needs. So sometimes you can put two animals in the same exhibit, and it does work, um, but usually you're better off just giving them their own exhibit, and mixed exhibits aren't always the best idea, because uh, one animal will usually be happier than the other with um, the amount of uh, like grass, and the amount of trees, the amount of rocks, etc., and shelters. Um, and if you go into the zookeeper tips, it says uh, how you can improve the exhibits. So it's saying it's saying that they're well suited to the exhibits. Not enough shelters. Well, that's because you gave birth. Um, you had a baby. There were enough shelters, and now there aren't. Anyway, let's build this. And that's another thing. Most, if not all, animals need a shelter. But the type of shelter they need differs from animal to animal. So, for example, moose like stables because they have hooves. Giraffes are big animals, so they need a specially designed giraffe shelter. Tigers like wooden shelters, and later on, rock caves because they're cats. Uh, you can spend money on research and conservation, which gives you access to extra things like staff education, shelters, animal care, which improves the quality of life of the animals. For example, improves reproduction rates, better food, um, prevention against diseases, animal enrichment, which is like toys uh, and objects. And then there's also conservation, which gives you more animals more trees and animal houses. Animal houses improved the guest happiness. And obviously this all, all makes sense in later videos. But for now, let's build our second exhibit. It says March and we have until uh, July, because we've got six months to do stuff. So, our second exhibit, I think we'll go for the polar bear. Again, we'll go for the plexiglass fence. 
Uh, there are different types of fences you can build. So depending on how strong or big the animal is, oh, a giraffe's given birth. Um, plexiglass fence is kind of good all round because it's reasonably cheap. I mean, it's still quite expensive. Guests can view into the exhibit, um, and it's strong enough that an animal can't break out unless it kind of deteriorates over time. But at full strength, the animal can't break out. Uh, animals also can't jump or climb over it, so it's kind of just like an all good all round. Um, later on, as you get more guests into your zoo, the animals can become unhappy if there are too many guests viewing it at any given time. Within which you have to basically work around that and say, hey, uh, guests, leave them polar bears alone, to paraphrase Pink Floyd. Um, anyway, this, the polar bear, as you might expect, lives in a very snowy environment. And it also requires uh, salt water, <laughs> not fresh water, uh, for swimming and possibly drinking. Now, I have kind of created a little... Uh, island here. The good thing is is that you only have to pay for this once you actually accept it, so what I'm doing at the moment isn't actually costing me money. Which is very nice, because it means I can kind of just play around with it and see how much they actually want. So... I've got too much water there, not enough snow. And there we go. So that is exactly how much snow and how much water it requires. Also build some rocks. Until it starts becoming unhappy, which it just did. And I think that is everything, apparently. Oh, actually. We can increase the rock counts, because these apparently don't count towards... Uh, like the rock count, but they improve happiness, which is a bit unusual. Suitability 84. Later on, there will be scenarios where it's like, all exhibits need a suitability of, insert number here, like 90. Um, in which case, 85 would not be good enough. And the, re the way you do that is by simply, like, well, you research, you spend money on research. So, for example, you would increase the wood shell, you improve... Change it from a wood shelter to like a uh, specially designed shelter. And also, you can have some toys. Uh, we don't have any toys at the moment, but uh, that's that would be how you improve the suitability. Uh, but for now, we only need 60. And animal, animal happiness of 80. Animal happiness is currently 98. Animal happiness is not hard to do. You have three ratings. You have zoo rating, which is kind of just like... Uh, overall quality of the zoo. So it's 81 because it's not a very big zoo and there's not really a lot to do. Um, guest happiness 80, probably because there's not really a lot that they can do. Um, if we had more exhibits, they'd probably be happier. Also, building things like uh, better paths um, and like animal houses increases guest happiness and um, overall zoo rating. Animal happiness is usually the easiest one to do, because um, that's just about making the animals happy. Happy. Polar bears can't find any food, so let's get another zookeeper, and he will place the food. So he's placed some fish for the... that's interesting. We have zookeeper 1 and zookeeper 1. Zookeeper 1 was given to us, but the other zookeeper uh, we just hired. Zookeepers give food to the animals. They also clean up the poo and tranquilize escaped animals and put them in crates so that you can later put them back in the exhibits. Uh, they're probably the most important, although Obviously, maintenance workers are important because maintenance workers uh, repair 
repair the fences and clean up trash from bins and if guests can't find a bin they'll just put the trash on the floor uh, and occasionally you'll get guests throwing up not quite sure why that happens but it does happen and anyway the final exhibit we'll build here uh, let's do there are three months left to complete the scenario. So it gives up half our time. Not the end of the world. It's an easy scenario. Um, I think we'll do a leopard. Because lion... We could do lion. Um, let's do lion. Lions are more common and probably more popular than leopards. So let's just do lion. Male, female, lion. And a wooden shelter. And lions require some fresh water. It's been a long time since I've played this game, but I can kind of remember what you do. So, Savannah. Um, I think they also require some dirt and maybe some sand. Yes, they require some sand. And a polar bear's given birth. Everyone's given birth. This is really weird. Dirt. Um. Okay. So the lions are now happy. More animals of the same type would make them happier. Uh, they would want some toys and some rocks and some trees. So, let's give them the small lion rock. Uh, that makes them happier. Let's give them another one. And another... Uh, apparently. Okay, so apparently three is the amount they want. Uh, let's get another female lion. So this male lion now has two wives. He's a polygamous lion. Um, he's a Mormon. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. No offence to any Mormons who are watching. Um... Needs more foliage and some rocks. So, they like the umbrella thorn cassia tree, like the giraffes. Um, I don't know why it's done that. So. Uh, we have the number of trees that we need and some rocks. <laughs> You can't place it there, so it gives you a funny noise, like, doing. Okay. There it is again. So that is a lion exhibit with suitability rating of 96. It would be possible to get it up to 100 if we had better stuff, but we don't, so 96 is the limit. Um, well, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, we have beaten the objective, so all we have to do now is sit around and wait. I will save the game as a uh, campaign. In fact, actually, I'll just call it Small Zoo, since that is the name of the game. Uh, yep. So we've beaten our objectives, and all we have to do now is just sit around and wait. Unfortunately, there's no speed setting, so I can't just, like, speed the game up. So you'll just have to sit around and bear with me as we uh, wait for the scenario to end. I could actually build another exhibit if I wanted to. Unfortunately we don't really have a lot of money. Um, could increase the admission price and make more money. Uh, let's do that. Let's make it $30 to get in. And could spend more money on uh, like advertising. Let's do that. How are the finances for this zoo? So we made negative money each month. But that's only because we actually. Um, that's only because we actually uh, were spending money. So if we actually look at the income and expenses. Um. If you ignore animal purchase cost and construction cost, 
Um, then last month we spent eighteen and a half thousand dollars on animal purchase cost and construction cost, uh, and we made therefore a net profit of about a thousand dollars. And in February. Oh, I'm looking at this wrong. Sorry, I was thinking that was the most recent month, but it isn't. So in April, um, we spent about sixteen thousand three hundred dollars on. Yeah, so we're making about a thousand dollars a month, which is fine. I mean, it's not very much, but the main thing is we're making money, um, and also we don't actually have to worry about money. Um, because we're not going to go bankrupt. There was a message at the top of the screen, um, saying that Azuki Boo is getting has ha, Azuki Boo is having trouble getting to a large poo. That's the kind of game this is. When your zookeepers have difficulty getting to large poo. I don't know which poo that is, and I don't know why he's getting difficulty getting to a poo. But, that's, oh, I know why. It's because the polar bear decided to poo in an inaccessible part of the exhibit. You just had to go and poo there, didn't you? Polar bear. Um, since we're going to have one entrance per exhibit, I'm pretty sure there's no actual way to clean up that poo, which is a bit worrying. Um, I'm going to change the way this exhibit works by um, making that into salt water. Well, actually, we can't do that just yet. That zookeeper can't get out. Um, right, I'm going to change how this works. Yeah, this is always a, this is always a thing. You have to be careful that your zookeepers can get out of the exhibits, um, and also you don't get areas of poo uh, that can't be cleaned up. So bear with me. Put snow there and some salt water, because now there's too much snow apparently. Um, It's such a ridiculous game. Whoops. There we go. Now that's now they can actually clean up the poo. The only problem is if they poo there, um, the zookeeper won't be able to clean it up. I'm hoping that that polar bear will eat this fish soon, so I can move the polar bear and get rid of the island. Yes, islands are bad. I didn't consider this. Um, because if the, if the polar bear decides to poo in the island, there's no way for the zookeeper to get there and clean up the poo. Yes, I'm being serious. That is actually a concern in this game. That you have to be aware of. Anyway. It is May 10th. And we have until 1st of July. Uh, we don't really have enough money to build another exhibit, so we basically just sit around and wait. Not a lot to do. Um, sorry about this. The game, to be honest, like, I really wish it would just kind of let us win. Because um, it does mean that you basically have to sit around and wait for quite a long time. Guest happiness is 89, zero rating is 84. A camel's given birth. Animal happiness, 98. So the polar bears are hungry. But they do have some food. Zuki was cleaning up the poo that he previously couldn't get to. Um, Bengal Tiger's hungry. Oops. Bengal Tiger is hungry. But it does have some food in there some... Whoops. Somewhere. Yep. There is some food there. Guests seem to be very happy with your zoo. They have a guest happiness rating of 90. Out of 100. So, why would they not be happy with us? <sighs> Lions are happy. 
Moose are happy. Everyone's happy. Polar bears happy. Although the polar bear suitability is not that high. It's high enough. It just goes to show you that uh, 60 is really easy to main to achieve. Um, but this is like a tutorial, so... Hey-ho! Now you can see here a maintenance worker emptying the bin. And if we click on him, he's going to empty another bin. Good job, suit. Good job, maintenance worker. Uh, yeah, sorry if this is rather boring. I really don't have anything to say uh, other than just waiting for the game to end. Everything's kind of just working. We're making money. Guests keep coming to the zoo. Animals are happy. Profitable zoo. It's not hard. The main thing is, the guests have toilets, food, drink, and places to sit. In fact, actually, there's quite a lot of trash build up, or rubbish. So let's get another maintenance worker. We're going to pay them $300 a month, but I think we can afford that. In fact, we can afford that. I checked the finances earlier. I don't know why there's a lot of guest vomiting. Um, I really don't. Why are guests vomiting? I don't know. I really don't know why that's happening. It's not important, it's just something weird. Uh. Later on you get um, scenarios with goals like um, Animal Happiness 95, Guest Happiness 90 or 93 or 95, and then Zoo Rating of like 90. Um, and then you want to look after... You obviously want the best exhibits for your animals and you want laid out paths and scenery that are well thought out, and you also want um, like enough zookeepers, enough maintenance. Um, guests seem to be very happy with your zoo. Then why are you vomiting all over the place? Why are you vomiting everywhere? There is only one month left to complete the scenario. I can't find a gift shop. Where can I buy a souvenir? Hmm. Okay, so let's get a gift stand. Uh huh. And you can buy stuffed panda. Guests, particularly children, love the stuffed panda. And let's colour it in. Uh huh. Stereotypical circus type theme, uh, yellow and red. And hopefully that will make a bit of money. No one's used it yet, so it's a bit worrying. Um, hopefully it would be uh, used soon. He says. There we go. People are using the gift stand. So, our first customer has used the gift stand. It would seem. Yep, there we go, it's making a bit of money now. Uh, you do have to make monthly upkeep, but people are actually using it. Which is good. So it's making money. Could increase the price on that, but we're not strapped for cash. And cash, cash is not our goal. We're not strapped for cash, and we only have a month left to do the scenario. Um, later on you'll get scenarios where it's like uh, 12 months to complete, 18 months to complete, 24 months to complete, 36 months to complete. The longest scenario I think is 36 months. Um, there are actually scenarios with no time limit, which simply means that if you do the goals at any given time, then you do win. Um, there's not a lot of them, but 
they're always nice because it means that you get as long as you want and you don't have to sit around waiting for time to end like we're doing now um yeah for some reason the scenarios always come in uh, deadlines is six months multiples so like 6 12 18 24 36 i don't know why it just works out that way and weirdly there are no scenarios with a time limit of 30 months um like i said it's 6 8 sorry 6 6 12 18 24 36 um Usually you get more than enough time. Usually time isn't so much the issue as actually completing the goals and make sh making sure that the goals remain completed. Because the thing is, is like um, it's entirely possible that at one point you'll complete the goal and then six months later something will happen um, and you fail the scenario. For instance, if an animal dies of old age, or if an animal escapes without you noticing, these these things obviously affect, um, I guess, happiness and zoo rating, and ultimately can lead to the failure of your zoo and the scenario. Uh, two weeks left, more or less. Not exactly two weeks, but. Um, sorry if I'm being a bit repetitive, I really don't have anything to say. Um, I'm just monitoring over the zoo and making everything, making sure everything works out okay, which it seems to be doing. Um, I mean, obviously these are very easy goals. Um... One week left, or oh, week and a bit. Anyway, um, June twenty fourth. So we've got a week left. So uh, I'm probably gonna do like one video per scenario. So obviously, the later ones will be longer, and these ones fairly short, although I don't know, actually six months is still quite a long time in game. Um, but yeah, one video per scenario. Um, and there are a whole load of these, so I'll I'll hopefully have uh, plenty of videos. Um, it will be in a separate playlist. Um, haven't decided yet whether I'll have a separate playlist for the Dinosaur Digs and the Marine Rainier, or if I'll just have one big playlist. I'm thinking I'll probably just have one big playlist. Um, although I'll name the videos accordingly. Um, hmm. It is June 29th, so I will say... Um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, hopefully, you didn't get too bored of just sitting around waiting. It's not the most interesting of scenarios. Um, but anyway, yeah, so thank you for watching. That is the end of the video. Uh, we did easily win that campaign scenario. Uh, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.